Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good. In this video, we are creating some absolutely gorgeous, wow impactful Halloween cauldron coasters. Say that in one breath, I dare you. <laughs> As you know, I do work in collaboration with Moulds and Shapes, so all of the details for the mould will be in the description box below. I loved this one so much. I'm not going to repeat myself because I've already done the voiceover and I don't want to say exactly what I said in the voiceover, but here is my very first project using the cauldron coaster mould from Moulds and Shapes. <laughs> I hope you love it. I have been beyond excited to use this mould, guys. If you saw the unboxing, I'll link it here. If you missed it, go check it out. Moles and Shapes sent this set of four coasters and this huge cauldron tray over to me. And the minute I got them, I was itching to use them, but I knew I had to wait because I was doing summer and then a few autumn videos. So yeah, today was an exciting day. I finally got to use it. I'm placing it down on my worktop, on the plastic that it came in, simply for movement. When I'm using Jesmonite, you wanna be able to shimmy it, you wanna be able to move it around. And if you don't have it on something that enables you to do that, your silicon, <laughs> your silicon mold will cling to your surface. So I am using Jesmonite pigment in in black and I am going for the full whack 2% maximum allowance. One of the biggest questions I get when we use Jesmonite is how to get a black black and how to get a white white and truth be told you have to use the entire 2% pigment allowance because if you don't you really are going to be getting a, like a dark muddy grey so if you really, really want a strong black and white, you have to use the 2%. The other question I get, and I just got this the other day as well on my Instagram, is how do you get a black without jesmonite pigment? And I don't have any answers. I'm so sorry. There is no other product out there that I know of where you can get a jet black, black, black. So if anyone knows, then please put it in the comment section down below. Let's share, guys. Help each other out. And just, yeah, really it would be helpful to me as well because I don't know I know some people can't get jesmonite pigment where they are so I always feel somewhat guilty about using pigments in my video that I know people can't get I really like to use things that I know people have access to so there we have it if anyone knows just put it in the comment section so after I pour a really big shimmy and a shake, the mess is real. And once I demold these, I do have to sand around the edges, but I save you all from watching that because it's boring. I then went on to my Cricut because I know I wanted some Cricut details on here. Again, I know not everybody has a Cricut. So if you really wanted to, you could actually do this on Microsoft Word and maybe use a white pencil, it would work really well on Jesmonite. So you could actually write your words out with your white pencil or even your white Posca pen and then use acrylic paint, okay? Use acrylic paint to paint your words on because anything like pencil or Posca, it won't survive the sealing process. So there are, you know, I again, <laughs> again, I feel guilty for using a Cricut because I know so many people don't have a Cricut. If you can hear my puppy barking, he is downstairs right now barking because he's probably heard a bird or something I don't know George shh. <laughs> anyway here I am in the Cricut design space it took me a while to work out what slogans what phrases I wanted on each of my cauldron coasters but I had a vision I just had this vision of jet black and pure white vinyl and I just knew I knew it would pop this is exactly what I had in mind when I originally spoke to Moulds and Shapes Marjan and Eric about creating these cauldron coasters because I just wanted jet black cauldron coasters and when it came to actually using the mold I knew I had to go real simple create some real simple black cauldrons but the impact is a Wow. Now, I don't film actually me weeding for long because there's really no point. It's white vinyl with a white background and then you really can't see anything. So this is the next day. Before you apply vinyl or before you seal your jesmonite, you really need to let it go for 24 hours to thoroughly dry out and thoroughly cure, making them as strong as they can possibly be. Just look. I mean, come on. Look at this. How? 
gorgeous is this? It is probably the simplest thing you can do with Jasmine Eye is just to create a simple block color and then add a contrasting color on top in vinyl and this is the exact image I had in my head when I originally asked them if they could create some cauldron coasters. I love it so, so much. The vinyl I'm using is, I do believe, yeah, it's HTV Ron. So this is white standard crafting vinyl and yeah, super easy to weed, really easy to transfer and yeah, love it, love it. Okay, so we have got Trick or Treat, which I adore. We've also got Pick Your Poison. Now, all of these can be found on the Cricut Design Space. It was only here I noticed that the dot under the exclamation mark was missing. Luckily, it was still on the paper. It was still on the transfer paper. So it was easy to just go back, peel it off with my tool. <laughs> I still don't have the technical words. My tool. I was able to go back and peel it off as you see here. What is this tool? The weeding tool. <laughs> the weeding tool. Can you tell I'm excited? I've not long finished the project so I'm often quite giddy. After I finished a project that I fall in love with, I'm often quite giddy. So if I do the voiceover this soon afterwards, I'm still quite high. So do forgive me. Yeah really easy. I hate when you lose things, you know, when you're weeding and you're transferring and then you lose a dot or you lose something and then you can't find it again and it's like, no. But yeah, hocus pocus, I absolutely love. Big shout out to Tony, my friend here on YouTube, Crafty by Tony. Guys, go check her out. She is crazy in love with the film Hocus Pocus and I had to admit, I'd never seen it. I think she was on the verge of never speaking to me again, but I have promised her I've promised her I will watch it this year because Hocus Pocus 2 is nearly out. So I do need to get with the program and watch it. Now this one here I particularly love. This is actually probably my favourite witch's brew but I'm also very aware we have a spelling error here. And I'm guessing this is just for convenience and you know to make it kind of neat and small and symmetrical. But yeah most of the things on the Cricut design space that say witch's brew they do have the E there. So I don't know. Guys, I'm admitting it out loud. Is that a grammatical error? Is that a spelling mistake? Either way, that is exactly how I found the file and I decided to just roll with it. Right, who cares? <laughs> really, in today's world, who cares if there's an E or not an E? But I really love it. The trick or treat one, I particularly love the lines at the top. It really gives this kind of 3D effect to the top of the cauldron, makes it look like the rim of the cauldron. Really love that. Pick your poison. Mm. Uh, just everything about this project is right up my street and I have to admit I spent about an hour on Cricut Design Space so even though this video is fit into a short 10 minute video please know that I spent an hour on Cricut Design Space looking for exactly the right wording, the right phrases, ones that are all going to go together you know and be cohesive so when you see the set of four coasters they all really work together and one is not particularly more busy than the other but they all kind of just tie in and I absolutely love this honestly love the coaster mold is a dream and I cannot wait to make more. I've got so many ideas in my head of all of the different kinds of coasters that I could possibly use. Very similar to the molds and shapes Christmas bauble mold that you saw me use last year. I literally did about seven videos just on that one mold because the ideas were flying in my head and I could not get enough of it and I feel that way about this mold it is up there as one of my favorite molds so versatile the possibilities are endless and yeah I'm gushing now <laughs> I'm just gushing over this mold but I absolutely love them the one thing I do need to tell you though is that I do need to sand the backs of these I spent way too long shimmying and shaking that the jesmonite started to set and my backs became a little bit uneven and because jesmonite is not self-leveling they never really did level themselves out so I do need to run these over just for about a minute on a bit of sandpaper to bring that back to flat because the backs are not thoroughly 
flat there's a little bit of a rock in these coasters and that's going to be absolutely fine I can do that before I then either add my cork backing or my rubber dot feet but love absolutely love this this is my second halloween video i hope you guys love it as much as i do i cannot wait to use the giant cauldron tray i've got two ideas in my head so let me know in the comment section what you would use that giant tray for because i am excited thank you so so much if you are still here i really appreciate the time you've taken out of your day because i'm just ridiculously excited at this mold and all of the things that i really want to try with it i hope you've loved it i hope you feel inspired and i hope you get cracking on your halloween crafting i appreciate you all very very much and i will see you all in the next video bye